Hi, welcome to this example on solving trig equations that factorize and are equal to zero. So here we've got an example where I've got sine x all multiplied by 1 minus 2 cos x equals zero. And we've got to solve it for x between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Now when you have an equation that is factorized and equals zero, then we can say either one or more of the factors equals zero. So in this particular example, we can therefore say that either the sine x equals zero or the other factor, one minus two cos x equals zero. Now if we start with just sine x equals zero, let's just put that down here, when sine x equals zero, then to work out x, x would be the inverse sine of 0. Now, with a result like this, you should really know the answers, actually. If you don't, then there's several ways. You can either use the quadrant method or just do it from the graph. If you're doing it from the graph, which I'm not that keen on, I must admit, but you know, if you had, say, y and x here, and you're looking at the graph of y equals sine x, then you should know that the graph looks something like this. It starts from 0, goes up to 1 at 90 degrees, down to 0 at 180 degrees, 270 it's minus 1, and back at 360 degrees it's 0. So you should be able to see then that at 0, 180 and 360 degrees you've got x to be 0. So this is a very easy one. x equals 0 degrees, 180 degrees and 360 degrees. If you're doing the solution by the quadrant rule you could do it something like this. You could draw your quadrants up and this is the method I normally prefer put 0 degrees there. Now, when you've got sine x equals 0, you look at this value, is it positive or is it negative? Well, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. But let's imagine it's positive and we have no idea of what the result is. What I would do would be to draw one line in the quadrant where sine is positive and they're all positive in here. And sine is positive in the second quadrant, so draw a line equally inclined to the horizontal line here. Mark in these two and what I would need is to give this angle, this is a possible x. I'd also need to give this one round here and that too would be a possible x. Now when I inverse sine x on the calculator you get zero degrees. So that means that this red x here would have been zero. I'll just mark that in there, that that angle in there would have been zero degrees. So in actual fact, this line shouldn't be here, it should be horizontal. But what the heck, it doesn't matter, it doesn't alter the problem. Okay, that would be zero degrees. And if that was zero degrees, this angle in here would be zero degrees. And that would make the green X here go all the way round down to here, which would be 180 degrees. And don't forget, because this line is now on the horizontal line, because this is 0 degrees, I could actually carry round again and get 360 degrees. Anyway, this particular diagram is a bit trivial in a question like this. I say, try and learn this common result. Okay, let's move on to the other equation there. And that is when 1 minus 2 cos x equals 0. To solve this, we would rearrange it. We would have 2 cos x equals 1. And if I divide both sides by 2, we've got the cosine of x cos x equals a half. Now again, we should know this result, but if you don't, then to solve it, We've obviously got to do x equals the inverse cos of a half. And again, I'm going to draw not the graph, but the quadrants. I'm 
prefer generally the quadrant method. So I'd mark naught degrees there. Ask myself where is cosine positive, because we've got cos x equals a positive number here. We know that cosine is positive in the first quadrant. They're all positive there. Sine is positive there. Tan is positive there. And cosine is positive here. So that's in the first and fourth quadrant. So I draw a line equally inclined to the horizontal, marking those two as being the same. Starting from zero, I go round to the first blue line. Remember, turning in this direction is going from 0 degrees all the way around to 360. So this is a possible x. Start again from here. Go all the way around to the next blue line. And this is another possible x. I right, get on my calculator, work out what the inverse cos of a half is, and you should find that you get 60 degrees. So this angle in here, this blue angle, is 60 degrees. Mark that in there, and that corresponds to the red x. So that's telling me that x is equal to 60 degrees. That's the first one. And then if that's 60 degrees, then this one's 60 degrees. And that means this green one round here will be a full turn of 360 degrees minus 60 degrees. So in other words, 300 degrees. So we've got that one there, 300 degrees. So we need to just summarize, put all our solutions together. And so therefore, we can say, let's just rule that off. We can squeeze it in here and we can say that therefore x equals, and it's best to put them in order of magnitude. So we'll start with 0 degrees, then 60 degrees, 180 degrees, 300 degrees, and then finally 360 degrees. Okay, so if you get an equation that factorizes and it equals zero, then you should be able to solve each of the individual questions in a manner similar to this. Okay, so I hope that's been of some help.